All right, Shalom Rastafari. Let's answer a couple of quick questions. Some say um, that certain Rastafari are making a big deal about the 120, the 120th of His Imperial Majesty. And are we expecting, you know, are Rastafari, let's try to ask the question like some of them ask this question. Are we expecting His Majesty, right? Are we expecting His Majesty to return, you know, saying after 120? What they don't know, they just don't know. But we think, and we know that it's important to address these particular facts. No, we are not expecting you know, like Majesty is 120, they almost rudely say, well, so what? So what of it? You know, so, so what is all that about? You know what I'm saying? He was crowned in 1930. That all prophecy is fulfilled. Is all prophecy fulfilled? Are you under that illusion that all prophecy is fulfilled just because prophecy has been fulfilled? Obviously, they have not read the book. And they just don't know what they just don't know. Now, concerning the Son of Man or Lij Teferi, let's focus right here on Lij Teferi for a moment. Lij Teferi, the one born in 1892, July 23rd, who we know as the Son of Man or that particular man child, right? Now, we know that His Majesty is the fulfillment of Christ and His kingly character. You understand? But now we have to understand the mystery of the mishtir and the mystery of God in Christ. This is very biblical. You can look it up, and please do look it up and find the truth for yourself. You understand? Some might be able to quote Bible and certain basic verses, but there is a certain, for lack of a better word, theology. You understand? What is theology? Theo mean. God, or is interpreted as God, Theos, or Theo, and Logos, is logic. And the logic is the Son. The Son is the Logos. Let us recognize that. So we're not looking for Lij Teferi, Yosem, to come again. Like we're not looking for Yeshua HaMoshiach to die again or to go to the cross again. So we're not looking for this manifestation one time. We're not looking for this manifestation of the king one time. We're not looking for the man-child one time. Let us understand that. And therefore, we are not looking for the king of kings in that secular, worldly sort of sense to come again. They say, well, his majesty is dead. This is what they say, certain people who claim that he is God, that he is dead. Can they prove that, or do they believe the bone lie? You know, my brothers and sisters, this is a very interesting subject matter because it's not that we are um, waiting for the return of His Imperial Majesty. It's that God is waiting, Jah is waiting for us to grow up. That's what He's waiting for. He's waiting for us to grow up in this adoption or in this sonship. Let's bring up the verse, Romans 8.15. Have you read this, Romans 8.15? You understand? This, this whole chapter here and other places speaks of that adoption. You understand? And for us, not to just be little children, but to grow up. Not to be children in knowledge, but to be children in wrath. So, no, we are not. But there's much more to this particular picture, you understand, um, when we speak about the 120. There's the whole other side of the story, the spiritual side of the story. You see, this is very real when we're speaking about the sons of God and the prophecy of Genesis chapter 6. They say it has nothing to do, right? They say that it has nothing to do with God. How can they say it have nothing to do with God when God hath said, you know saying, the Lord hath said, that my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So the true Rastafari, right, are not, are not looking for a so-called second, second coming. 
You know what I'm saying? We're not looking for a second, second coming. You know what I'm saying? True. Prophecies have been fulfilled. But we have to know what prophecies have been fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? And also, what role and responsibility do we play as sons and daughters? You know what I'm saying? Of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, this right here is uh, what we're going to use for the Ficare Yesus, right? And the Ficare Yesus, this is a little book. Some don't know about this little book of his Imperial Majesty, so we want to bring this to the eye of them awareness. We also want to show you something else right here to show you that his Imperial Majesty was well aware of the true spiritual. This is the cover of the book right here that we're going to utilize. This is the Amharic version, the Amharic version, the all Amharic version, first Fikari Iesus, or the explication, right? The explication of Iesus or Yeshua. It's a very, very interesting document, and we have worked and labored on a translation. It's just like that little book, the old thing that we read of. In fact, it is that little book. Now, this is one of the... Um, after work, uh, Tekla, Last Judgment. It's the last judgment with Yeshua. Yeshua is on the throne. See, ones don't recognize the real role of father and son. If they did, they will understand that the King of Kings is I and I, God Father. You understand? And Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life. This is another picture right here, which is interesting. We call this um, um, H. S.I. or Hala Selassie first, Hala Selassie, I get them all with Hala Selassie. We call this the apocalypse. Now, this actually is a color picture. This, was going to, this is going to be the cover right here of our translation, our raw translation of it, because we wanted to keep it as raw to the text so that those who might not um, be fluent or have a... Uh, a, a understanding of Amharic would be able to understand this particular book, the Ovesen, which was which was um, printed and published in the 43rd year of His Imperial Majesty's reign. So, if we would look at that 43rd year, roughly to 74, 75, that would be roughly 74, 73. 73 or 74, 1973 or 74. And when you delve into the content of this particular book, the Kari Yesus, some say it even speaks of what occurred the 9-11, you know, and from a very straightforward interpretation, one can say that it does speak of the 9-11 incidents and, and many other incidences that are becoming more and more well known to us. This is interesting here. This is His Imperial Majesty in front of this very picture right here. The picture that we're going to feature for the um, Fikari Yesus, um, the translation version, right? The Fikari Yesus. Now, if you look at this particular picture, it is highly, highly, very interesting and it's very, very illuminating as well. You can see in this particular picture, there's a war. There's a spiritual war. We call this the Haile Selassie apocalypse picture. And in fact, there's some French down here at the bottom of the picture, right? There's some French down here at the bottom of the picture. And I think it says um, um, something about the apocalypse. I don't know if you can see this well. We might have to ask some of the French-speaking brothers and sisters to give us a a fuller translation, but we recognize that word apocalypse there. Now, isn't this very interesting, my brothers and sisters? I mean, when you, when you observe this picture, now we showed you the color, the color version that we have, and some might even have even a better um, photograph of it. If ones do, then, you know, um, share it if they will. You understand? But you see, there's a, there's a war going on. Notice this. There's a spiritual warfare going on, right? You see the spiritual warfare that's going on? Now, who is this? This is Kadamawi Haile Selassie. This is Haile Selassie first, right, upon that throne, right? But then above him, right, is a spiritual warfare. It's like, 
it's like angels and demons are fighting. You know, and some ask, well, so what the 120 years? So what His Imperial Majesty, or rather, Lij Tafari, is 120? What does that mean? They, they dismiss the positive evidence that we have of Abu Qadus. You've got to recognize that Rastafari, Rastaman, say, Jalif, even before, right, even before we had any pictorial testimony of this one, this, some say, priest, some say, Deptera, who is named Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin, and his brothers who have met with Abba Kedus and who have testified, the overstand to faithful witnesses concerning this. We have no reason you understand to believe or to infer we trust it and from all verification even from many Ethiopians even members of I and I own, own family and our mother-in-law she testified to an ascension an ascension that was witnessed by many in Ethiopia of Abba Kedus um, this is 2012 it seems as though it took place sometime around the Ethiopian new millennium and when I first heard about this, I testified about this before, about how he was in the midst of two or three, and ascended, just like Yeshua HaMoshiach ascended. Now, of course, this sounds, this sounds out of this world, but then we're hearing about a lot of things that also sound very much out of this world. You understand? Know Remember, we, we, we live in a world that is not I and I own. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a whole spiritual reality. There's a whole spiritual reality that ones are not recognizing. Now, let's look at this picture right here. Here's the color one from the Fikari Yesus cover right here of the, of the, trans, the translation, right? The translation and interpretation of this particular, this particular work right here. So this already is, is, um, has gone to press. The Fakari Yesus, right? The Fakari Yesus, the Amharic one, right? The Amharic version. This is the little book, right, that we find um, scripturally in um, chapter chapter ten. You, let, let's go. Let, let's go to chapter ten for a moment. Chapter ten of, of Revelation concerning this little book. What we want to do right here is is enlarge in this picture a little bit and let you see this, this spiritual warfare that's going on. As you can see right here, there's a whole spiritual warfare that's taking place up here. So we already show you His Majesty standing in front of this particular, um, this particular photo, photo right here. See His Majesty standing in front of this spiritual warfare right there. All right, now notice the cover to to Abba Kedus, the chess master, right? Now, some would have told you that giants, when they said that there were actual giants in the earth, some would say that that wasn't true. Some would say that was old-time people fantasizing. But they would say because they never saw it. You know, like those who deny the spirit is real because they say they never saw it. But then when we look at this particular picture, which is more inflamed focus rate, you can see there's a spiritual warfare. And we know that His Imperial Majesty recognized this because we have the black and white of Him standing in front of this very picture. Let's see if we can um, move some of this around right here. All right, uh, but could do, let's, so let's bring up the black and white. Okay, so we have this spiritual warfare right here and you see that the spiritual warfare okay so let's go to um chapter chapter is it chapter 10 let's go to chapter 10 of revelation concerning this little book and we identify this little book as we identify the book of the seven seals in revelation chapter 5 now we're going to identify this little book and we showed you this little book before, and let's actually show you the copy that we received from our mother-in-law, right? Let's show you this right here. Here we go. 
This is this is the little book. See this little book? Fikare Yasus. Where Tinbite Nabiyad. That's the explication of Yesus Yeshua. Where and Tin Bite uh, and the prophecy of the Nabiyad. You see down there it says Be means by Garmawi Nagusha Nagesh Kadamawi Haila Shilase Be Arba Soso Shostenyao Zemene Mengisht. This is this line right. Let's get the pointer right there. This is this line right here. This is this line right here, right? It says Begarmawi Nagusha Nagesh Kadamawi Haila Shalase Be Arba Shostenyao. That's the Ethiopic ciphers or number. Zemene Mengisht. Right? That means the age of government or the time of government. Some say the reign of government. But that's the same word we use for age as in new age. Adis Zemen. So in the 43rd reign or the 43rd year of his reign. Now, that's very, very important. This little book here. This little book. Right? Especially when we now get into the content. Right? What are the content of this little book? In fact, in the first part of it, it speaks of right down here. In the first part of it, it speaks about Benoch Zemen Yenebaru Sawoch Yeteset Achowin Timher Chila Bemalet. In the time of Noah, or Noah, the people. Um, the people who were in the time of Noah, they 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 regarded lightly, right, the teaching that they were given. You understand the the teaching that they were given. See a chefuruna, see a denisu. Like they went out to the clubs, they party. Yes, they had their own clubs and they party. Yet if wucha didn't get tarargo in the wasedacho. So, so the, the water of destruction suddenly, just like sweat, sweeping them suddenly, it took them away. Ya alem chilfet, you understand, the end of the world, ya Christos memtat, and the coming of the anointed in Dihu, bala ta sebebebet sa'at nawina will be in the hour in which they know not. And then it says, um, Tezegaja Tachu Tebuku. In other words, be prepared, be prepared, being prepared, watch. In other words, Tebuku. In other words, um, guard, be on your guard. Keep awake. Be, 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 be like diligent, but be on your guard. Be, be careful. Then it quotes, uh, it puts a reference to Mateos, Matthew, Haya Arat, uh, chapter 24, verses Shalasa uh, Sementis Ka Arba, verses 38 to 40. The ciphers over there. So this is the Fikare Yesus. This is that little book. So we're not waiting for so called Christ, as one says, or, or for the King of Kings, or Haile Selassie, because it's the 120th year to come again. You understand? Christ, God, is waiting for us, the alleged or assumed sons and daughters, to grow up. You understand? To assume, you understand, our proper role in his arrangement of things. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it's the grace still the, the, the grace of the King of Kings in Christ that is upon us. But it's a very clear and obvious sign for us that even when we see the picture of Abba Kedus, you know, saying some get, some get it twisted. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. You know, saying this is just an affirmation. Like when the Rasta man tell you, say, that Jah live, Yahai, Yahai. Yahai, Yahai, Jalev children, yeah. But then it's even, it, it even gets much 
I wouldn't say much deeper than that. That's just that's just existence that John lives. You understand? I mean, that's a comfort to I and I as Rastafari. You understand? But even before we saw that picture, we knew the reality. But now we get in these latter days and times that confirmation. So what about Albert Caduce in 2012? You understand? Well, isn't it interesting that his Imperial Majesty in 2012? You know what I'm saying? I mean, look at look at the numbers. Just do the math. You know what I'm saying? I mean, do the math. You have to recognize that this this universe is not just a physical hologram. Some people say that God ain't ain't invisible. They lie. God is visible. He's spirit, and he is visible, and he has the ability to make himself manifest, and he has made himself manifest in this particular man child. And you understand, in this man child whose 120th memorial, you understand, of his birth is this year, 2012. And we're speaking of Lij Teferi, as Revelation chapter 12, verse 5 says. And she, speaking of the Mama Ethiopia, she brought forth a man child who was to do what? Rule all nations, earth's rightful ruler with a rod of iron, and her child, that man-child, was caught up to God. You know what I'm saying? Caught up to God. We explain that based on His Majesty's own words and His own testimony, the witness of Him. And to His what? Throne. Which throne? Why do you think it's a triple crown? You know what I'm saying? Most folks don't even understand why it's a triple crown. Because those three, those three realms, those three worlds... You know, send those three realms, those three worlds. Now, some folks say, well, God is only manifest in flesh. He is not spirit. They lie. Those who say he's only spirit and he cannot be so-called lower than himself, they lie because they limit his power. And they also show their ignorance of him. You know what I'm saying? They show their ignorance of him. So... We're not waiting for His Majesty or Lich Teferi to manifest again any more than we are waiting for Yeshua, the Son, to be crucified again. Neither are we waiting for Haile Selassie to be coronated again. There's no need for that. You know what I'm saying? What there's need for is for I and I to grow up, you know what I'm saying, as His dearly beloved children. You know, we can actually go through this particular verse here in Romans, or this chapter in Romans chapter 8, which is very interesting, because it says, uh, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Abba. What's Abba? Abba is Father, right? Abba is Father. It says, The Spirit itself beareth witness, with our spirit. So what bears witness with our spirit? It's the spirit that we are the children of God, that we are the Bani Ha Elohim, that we are the Bani Ha Elohim. And if children, then ears, ears of God. Therefore, we are ears of the King of Kings and his Christ and joint ears with Christ. We are co-ears with our big brother. You know what I'm saying? With Yeshua HaMoshiach. If so, be that we what? Let me see this key word here. If we suffer with him. You know what I'm saying? For anyone who seeks to live godly will suffer what persecution. You know what I'm saying? This, this, this world is not I and I own. You know what I'm saying? And all the evil, the evil doers and the evil. We, we, we suffer. But we are not suffering, you know what I'm saying, just by ourselves. And we suffer with him that we may be what? Glorified together. You know what I'm saying? Glorified. So we are looking for that glorification, and God is looking for his children to grow up. For I reckon the sufferings of this present time not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Notice what it's saying, uh, revealed. There's an unveiling. You see, because his Father has already manifested, you know what I'm saying, his unveiling. He has revealed his glory to us for the earnest you get this right here verse 19 for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth what does the earnest expectation of the creature wait for 
It waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, now, do you really understand what, what it's saying right here? See, so when some try to be either funny or just ignorant and say that, are we waiting for his majesty to return? Return, return for what? Hasn't he revealed himself? Has, hasn't the book of life been opened? But have we read? Have we, have, have we been born again? Have we received it? You understand? Can we truly cry, Abba? You understand? Can we truly cry? Are we truly sons and daughters? Because remember, it says that the earnest expectation of the creature, every time you see on TV was talking about how these uh, animals and creatures or, or, or because of they call it global warming or this or that or because of man's pollution and man's killing off nature and destroying natural habitat. This is speaking about the creature, right? The creature and all those human beings that don't know themselves as sons and daughters and all those um, fleshy Christians or believers in Christ but say that Jesus, you know, and Yeshua, is, is, is not divine. You understand? Therefore, they, they, they are not sons and daughters either. You have to understand that. Because there's sons and daughters, there's children, and there's creatures. Right? For the earnest expectation of the creature, you understand? Both the four footed one and the two footed one waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. So they're waiting for what? A manifestation. A couple of verses earlier it says a, a revelation. What is revealed? It's talking about a glory. What glory? What did His Majesty say? For my part, I what? I glory in the what? In the Bible. Right? For my part, I glory in the Bible, which glory shall be revealed what? In us. In us. All right? So when folks talk about, well, everything is already all prophecy fulfilled, and they lie. Or they just, they, well, they lie. Yeah, they lie. They, they're not telling you the truth. Maybe they know it. Maybe they don't know it. Uh, I, you know, the jury is still out on that. For the creature was what? The creature was made subject to vanity. It's all the killing of, of, of the natural wildlife, all the destruction of their habitats, all the poaching. You know what I'm saying? Whether for the tusk or the skins or this or that or the furs or whatever like that. The overs. That's why Rastafari say, I and I support PETA. You know, PETA. You know what I'm saying? The PETA group. You, know, you have to support that, them ones there. You know what I'm saying? Because at least they recognize that the, that the creature, what's happening to the creature. But what, the, what is the creature looking forward to? The creature might say, well, give thanks, Peter. But it's looking for the sons and daughters of Rastafari because it says, for the earnest expectation, the creature waited for the manifestation of the what? The sons, the Bani Ha Elohim. That is I and I. In Yeshua HaMoshiach, to the glory of our Father, Abba, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin, our true Holy Father. For the creature was made what subject? It was made subject to what vanity? You know, it's vain. I mean, you see folks running around with the furs on and all the kind of stuff, and they don't care. You know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're creatures too. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, not the created, the truly created man, but the, you know, they've been, they've been deceived by the devil in this world of vanity. But the creature is made subject to vanity, not willingly, but, not willingly. Not, the, what do you think that these creatures want to be killed? These animals want to be killed? You know what I'm saying? All these people do cruelty to even dogs and cats. You know what I'm saying? Do you think they want to be killed? Do you think they want to be tortured? You know what I'm saying? You think the, the, like when they have the cock fights, the cocks really want to fight? You know what I'm saying? But they've been made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him. This should be capital H right here. Reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. They have an expectation. You know what? The, 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 the creatures have an expectation. It's like when you hear, sometimes we hear the birds singing in the morning. And it's amazing that they'll be singing every morning around the same time. And it's like they sound like they're all together singing. You understand? And yet I and I cannot come together and give thanks and praise or, or, or even where we're at. You understand? See, you have to really understand this. You really have to receive this word right here. It says, because the creature itself also shall be delivered. 
See, the creature, the animal creation, also shall be delivered from what? The bondage. Bondage. Right? Bondage of corruption. It's a bondage of slavery, of corruption. You understand? I mean, you ever see some of those vids? What's the video? Like, this is your meat. Right? That video, this is your meat. Meet your meat. Yeah, it's called Meet Your Meat. Look it up on the on the on the on the YouTube's or uh, on the internet. Meet Your Meat. It's a it's a DVD. Um, I'll make sure you know I have a strong stomach, but you have to check out what's going on so you can understand how real this word is, because it, for, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. It's talking about the wildlife, the so-called animal life, into the what glorious liberty. Whose glorious liberty? The liberty of the Bani Ha Elohim. The glorious liberty of the children of God. In the Old Testament, they would say sons of God. But here in the New Testament, it says, son, it says children, the sons and daughters of God. In other words, if we as the children of Jah, Rastafari, don't live up. You know when Rastafari say, live up, live up. Live up to what? Live up to the liberty of Yeshua HaMoshiach, to the glory of the King of Kings. Right? To the King of Kings, to Abba, to the King of Kings, through the Lord of Lords. Who is the Lord of Lords? Yeshua HaMoshiach. He is the Lord of Lords. Yes, the Father is in the Son and the Son is in the Father. No doubt about that. You want to bring this up right here. This, this is probably like a, this is a next, um, a next, uh, a next uh, lecture right here. You know what I'm saying? A next lecture right here. Let's see if we can bring this up right here. Um, just to, to show you something right here. All right? Just so you can overstand. You know what I'm saying? Overstand. All right? Now, let's, let's get through this verse right here. Okay, so the creatures, the animal creation... They are also enslaved. You know, we talk about, oh, they enslaved black men. Black men, they treat like an animal. All right, we're a little bit freer. Do we think about the creatures? Do we think about the animals? Like the saddest thing you hear about, like, is even in Africa, where it's like a white man, so-called peckerwood, got to come back in there and show them how to, you know, because only the people don't know how to be caretakers of their own land. Then they wonder why they don't get no rain or why... You know why the land is, is spitting them out. You understand? They say, oh, it must be bad weather. It must be um, um, carbon and, 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 you know, it must be oxygen or something like that. But let's go to the next verse. Next verse right here, verse um, 23, it says, And not only they, so it's not only the animals, the creatures, but ourselves also, the, the, the new creation. You understand? Those, those of us who are born again. You understand? Born in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in spirit and in truth. You understand? And who are baptized. And we're not just talking about the water baptism, but that's a good step. You understand? It's a good step to bathe. You're right? not just bathing with water, but overstanding spiritually. But ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. We have the what? The first fruits. The first fruit. You, you, you know how, if, if you are studying with us this Torah portion and our Rastafari Yeshiva, you, you understand we have seven, we have seven um, holy days. Uh, if we round it off, it would be eight, you know, um, but really seven holy days in three seasons, the Shiloshim, Regalim, right? People say, well, uh, Selassie is not in the world. So we think Shilosha is. We think Shilosha is. All right, um, and it's first fruits, right? There's the first fruits, and then after first fruits, what comes? What comes after first fruits? After first fruits comes the harvest. So, so if you look at the 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 seven um, Hebrew, the Moedim, what we call the Moedim, right? Some say the Moedim are rehearsals. You know what I'm because certain things in this in this prophetic time and fulfillment align with those who are obedient to Jah's way. So if we are in Jah's way and doing Jah's way at the time that we're supposed to, that the way is what will protect us 
You know what I'm saying? But if we're out there in, in the world and following after worldly people who deny you, then we might be caught up in the club somewhere. You know what I'm saying? When harvest time comes, you're up in the club. You know what I'm saying? So instead of him pouring out his spirit upon you, he, it's going to be wrath. Because remember, we're in the age of Aquarius, but there's two kinds of pouring out. There's the pouring out of his spirit and there's the pouring out of wrath. You understand? Know wrath upon the children of what? Disobedience and his spirit upon his own dearly beloved children in Yeshua HaMoshiach. So after the first fruits comes the harvest, we're saying, but not only they, the animal creation, the nature creation, the animal, the wildlife, so to speak, but ourselves also. You remember a couple of, I think just the other day they had some, some, some uh, orangutans or gorillas or monkeys or apes that had escaped or something like that, and how they just shot them. It was some news clip, and when I thought about it, it was like, you know how they always mock the black man, you understand? They mock the black man as the monkey, you understand? But they don't want to even recognize that it's black man and woman, you understand, that built the first monarchies. You know what I'm saying? The true, the true divine monarchies. Let's not get that twisted right there. You understand? Because you got a lot of these, um, these false kings, these false rulers, these false judges that Rastaman called a grudges. Right? So it's not only they, the creatures, the animal creation. Right? It's not only they, but ourselves also. It's ourselves also. Right? Which have the what? The first fruits. Right? The first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption the redemption of the body the redemption of the body yeah, can you save that save that in a in a, in a word text right there it's gonna yeah the redemption understand that the redemption of the body, all right, the redemption of the body. Let's go forward right here. Now, the redemption of the body. So you have to understand the tripartite being. You understand the tripartite being, and we we'll like to touch on that within Tawahido. First, explain some of the basics of what what does Tawahido mean. So check out Rastafari Tawahido. Man is tripartite. Man was made in the image and after the likeness of God, and in that image. And after his likeness, therefore, man has spirit, man has soul, and man has body, right? But man is, is falling, you know, has, has fallen, you know what I'm saying? And, and what way he has fallen, that's, that's, that's the next aspect we have to really understand. And, and how this world, you understand, this world is an illusion of a true world which resembles it, but is of, a, 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 of the true substance, you understand? So when people talk about, oh, well, invisible, you understand? There's nothing that God is not invisible. The word is invisible. You, you don't see it, but you hear it. You understand? I mean, there is, you know, there is that whole world you have to recognize that is even in us, our feelings, our thoughts. Do we, you know, do we see those sort of things? You understand? We feel them. There's other ways that we can recognize them. See, one has to come to the point of discerning. You understand? It's very, very important to have discernment. You understand? Spiritual discernment. We need spiritual discernment. Let us, let us recognize, all right? Let us, let, us, let us recognize. Let us recognize that. So, the redemption of the body. The redemption of the body. That's what we're working towards because we have the spirit, right? And Christ is the Savior of our soul. So it is the spirit, right? It is the soul. The last part is the redemption of our body because the last enemy to be destroyed is death. You understand? You see, when our faithful ob obedience is fulfilled, you understand? When we do his will. All right. Now let's go to this um, next line right here, verse 24. For we are saved by hope. What is hope? Hope is tesfa. What is tesfa? Tesfa is hope, expectation, a more active or practical word that we can um, 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 utilize 
more practical word that we can utilize that one's going to get better because hope, so now we hear the word hope being even misused. But it's expe- what do we expect? Now, when once do we check out, are they really, do we really have the true divine expectation or are we falling down into worldliness? You understand? Are we falling down into worldliness? Are we getting caught up in, 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 in the way the world is and we're looking at what people are using worldly means and we're not using the spiritual resources and the resources of faith that is in pure majesty in his manifestation, in his walking amongst men and people? Did he not prove that or testify to that and therefore verify? You understand? Know Even as one man. And now I and I all as a corporate, you know what I'm saying, as a corporate body, you know what I'm saying, as a corporate body, let's understand that. For we are saved by that expectation. So it's whose hope, right, it's whose hope, it's whose hope do we have, you know what I'm saying, it's whose hope. Do we, do, do we have worldly hope? Are we turning the spiritual gift, you know what I'm saying, and the spiritual um, um, blessing and inheritance into a worldly thing and we say oh we don't got enough money or oh, we don't got enough such and such have we first tapped into those spiritual resources that would even bring us to unity you know what I'm saying to, to, to unity as a as a once lost but now found people you know what I'm saying a people who are born again who are saved Israel black Israel is on the rise you know what I'm but hope that is seen, right? But expect to, if you expect something that you can already see, then for what a man seeth, why doth he yet expect it? Like if, if you already see it, then why are you expecting it? You know what I'm saying? So it is teaching us something here that we really need to digest, all right, and take to heart. But if we hope for that, we see not then do we with patience. That's the key right there. That's a very key word. Patience don't mean sitting down doing nothing. Yeah, I just wanted to say that because sometimes folks think when you say be patient, they think it means just sitting down, don't doing anything. No, it does not it does not mean that. You know what I'm saying? It does not mean that. Now, let's go forward let's go forward to the next part right here. Um Likewise, the spirit also, the irit, whose spirit? The spirit of the king of kings and his Christ, Yeshua, the spirit of God. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our what? Infirmities, our weaknesses, our, our, our illnesses, our diseases. You understand? See, but remember, the faith, the amen is the key. Some folks, I keep saying this, but I have to keep reminding myself sometimes when we, you know, we hear something from the world, and we have more faith in what we hear, oh, men and people or their system of things, than we have in our resources in the kingdom, in, in, in his majesty's divine, his majesty's divine economy. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So even those of us who might even... Um, no, and speak him hard, you understand, or those who might know the Bible. Sometimes we don't know what to pray for as we, you know, as we should, as we should pray for it. But what? But the spirit, the iris, the manifest itself maketh intercession, you understand, staying in his iris, that maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You understand, with groanings which cannot be uttered. You see, some who doubt and deny the Spirit, they are without hope. They are hopeless. Brothers and sisters, maybe pray for them, but don't, don't follow them because they, they're blind. And, and the blind lead the blind. They both fall into the ditch because they deny the Spirit. They deny Jah's Spirit, Yoke's and the Holy Spirit. They deny His Word. They deny His testimony. But it says that he and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what the mind, right, the mind of the spirit is. Because he maketh intercession for the who? The Kedusan, the holy ones. True Arastafari, who recognize the true Nazarite vow, are those holy ones. You have to understand that we are set apart if we truly are of Jah, according to the will, the what? The will of God. You know what I'm saying? Not doing what is right in our own eyes, but first things first. 
You know what I'm saying? First things first. Building our house on that, on that foundation. You know what I'm saying? In other words, denying ourselves. As, as, as Christ teaches, he says, if, one, if anyone comes after me, he should do what? He should deny himself. He should pick up his cross and follow me. A lot of folks pick up their cross. They might put on a mezcal and a, and a mateb and the mezcal, right? And they may follow others who go to church on Sundays and go to church on Sundays and get up and stand and sit down and say this and say that. But you know what they haven't done? It's the first thing they haven't done. And, and, and what's that first thing that they haven't done? They haven't denied themselves. Let's all understand that. They have not denied themselves. You see, they're still looking at the, They haven't let go of their ego. You understand? Know let go of their ego. And when we really study the, the, the gospel, especially, say, chapters, the first 12 chapters, say, of Matthew, taking the first book, and look at some of the, 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 basic, the basic teachings, some of the basic things, some of the basic foundationals are there. You find folks going to Revelation, and they haven't even built their foundation on, on the basic teaching for the disciples. And they say, yes, they love his majesty. Yes, they love Christ, but they haven't built. So you find that when we have even conflict or disagreements, are they doing it Christ's way, the way Yeshua says in his word, or are they doing it their own way? You know what I'm saying? They're falling back into worldliness. They basically are falling away from grace because instead of doing it John's way, they are doing it their way. And when you do it your way and not John's way, that's how you go astray. And that's how a 40-year, you understand, wandering in the wilderness has occurred even among the Beta Israel, we Ethiopian Hebrews of the present time. You understand the whole generation. You see a lot of our elders have passed away. You understand over the past 40 years. And where are we? We're still in the wilderness. Jah has took us out in order to take us in. But it's the wilderness. It's the wilderness. It could have taken them 11-day journey across the wilderness. But no. That 11-day journey, right? That 11-day journey took how long? took 40 years, a whole generation, the Torah portion that we're in right now, the 45th, um, Va'et Hanan, or Lemenuhu, is discussing how even um, Musa, he begged just to see the promised land because he couldn't go in. And it says that Jah was angry with him. Why? Why was Jah angry with him? Because he allowed the will of the people. He was doing, it's like a lot of y'all doing stuff to please people, or, or bread drain and cis drain and so forth and so on. Because you, you, you remember they gave you a spliff or had some ice out food or you went to the reggae dance or whatever. Them, them things are probably fear and good, you know what I'm saying? But, but that's not the things that we should be focusing on in the true liberty of his imperial match. The first thing is the word. You understand? Because in that day, you won't be able to say, if you've heard this far, you won't be able to say you haven't heard the word. You understand? So it's according to, this is the key right here. He maketh intercession for the Kedus son, right? But according to who? According to the will, the will of God. According to the will of God. Not according to the will of man. Not according to the will of this group or that group, or this group of brethren, or that group of brethren. So they can try and try as hard as they may want to if it's not according to God's will. You understand? Then it's ill. You understand? And it needs to chill. You understand? And, and, and be still. You understand? And know what your will is. And we know. Does it say we believe? No, no, no. It says, and we what? And we know. Uh, we guess. We assume. No, and we know. And we know. Well, I don't know. Well, you don't know, but we know. You see when it says we know? Meditate this. When we know that what? That all things work together for good. For good. So even though one's man and people may fight against the society, may fight against his majesty, may fight against I and I, Rastafari, uh, not mind that. You understand? You over the father put them in your hand, then we mash that. But we know what? We know that all things work together for good to them 
that love Elohim, Ha Elohim, Baruch that love Hashem, that love the name, that truly love the name of Kedamawi Chayla Shalase. Not just say I already love how it sounds, but they love him in spirit and in truth. To them who are called. See, some haven't received the call. They just, they just came along because they saw you come along. It's like Abraham often say how Abraham was called out of Ur of the Chaldees, right? And then he took his, his nephew Lot. You understand? A lot was just a, he was just a lot of trouble. A lot was just a lot of trouble. And that's like a lot of us. Jah calls us out, and now we're bringing all, you know, bringing, bringing every, everybody. Well, that, I guess the, the Israelites did the same thing. You know what I'm saying? They brought everybody. A lot of these folks here who said different uh, repatriation, and Ethiopian, and Federation ideas, they're, they're doing the same thing. It's kind of the same kind of mess that's going on, but they don't recognize it yet. But let's pray. You know what I'm saying? Let's pray for them. But for those of us who know, let us know that all things work together for good to them that love Hashem. Right? To them who are called, who are called according to his purpose. Not their purpose. Not what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Not what their ideas, you understand, their daydreams, their night dreams. For whom he did foreknow, whom he knew from before, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, 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 let's overstand this right here. For the mockers and the scoffers out there that say, oh, oh, we're waiting for Christ to return again. No, nah, my friend, we're not waiting for Christ to return again. We're, we're waiting for that unveiling, that revelation. But we know that we're part of that revelation. Because the word, the word that we just read right here in, in Romans, chapter, Romans chapter 8, it tells us that right there. You know what I'm saying? It tells us that uh, uh, the, the earnest expectation of the creature is what? The manifestation of who? The sons of God. And, and who's that? Who are the children of God? Who are the children? Who are the sons and daughters of God? Who's the sons and daughters of Jah? Rastafari. Rastafari is the sons and daughters. So it says in verse 29, For whom he did foreknow, whom he knew already. He already knew us from before. You know what I'm saying? She's, she's, now, you have to open the context right here. It's not talking about just everybody who want to call themselves a Christian or a godly or even a Rasta. It's not talking about everybody who grow a dreadlock and smoke a, a, a big spliff or a small one or a chalice or have a cutchy pipe or whatever, 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 whatever. It's not talking about that. Let, m m open your Bibles, Romans chapter 8. You know what I'm saying? Get, 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 on, get on the same page now. This is the unfailing purpose of Jah. That is through the what? Through the gospel, through the when gill. So we wonder, well, how come more hasn't happened? You know what I'm saying? In all these years, because once I've gone farther and further, you know what I'm saying? Away from the when gill, from the good news, right? From the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. You know what I'm saying? And that is why they find themselves in so much crisis. You know what I'm So when we look at this, even this situation right here, it's an earth crisis. So they find themselves in crisis right here. Because they've gone further and further away, you know what I'm saying, from Christ, from the true Wengel, from the true good news. So verse, 20, verse 28 again says, And we know, not believe, not guess, not assume, not, it didn't say we heard, we heard, I heard, you know, like sometimes I'll say some of these things to some folks that I know who've been in the church and are Christian, and they'll say, yeah, I guess so, I guess, it's just what we know, and I, we, oh, oh, you guess, so you guess, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love Hashem, that love Ha Elohim, to them who are called according to his purpose. So, if one's haven't been called, and they're not coming to do his purpose or will. Are things going to work out for the good, all things, anything? Will anything work out? Maybe something? No? Obviously not. It's not according to this inheritance. Remember, this is, this is his will. This is his testament. You know what I'm saying? The B-I-B-L-E. This is, this is the constitution for the African and Sion. 
You know what I'm saying? This is I&I Constitution. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about this. That's why they can't keep the, 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 the latter Constitution because they haven't kept the former Constitution. You know what I'm saying? Because even the latter Constitution, Ethiopian World Federation, what does it say in that latter Constitution? Our, what, divine heritage? You know what I'm saying? Our divine heritage? It says, um, for whom he did foreknow. See, some of us, he already knew us from before. He foreknew, right? He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. To be conformed to what? The image of his son. So it shouldn't surprise us that Yeshua, you know what I'm saying, is a Nazarene. You know what I'm saying, in that sense. You know what I'm saying? It, it shouldn't, I mean, that's the outer image. You know what I'm saying? Remember, there's the image of the spirit. There's the image of the soul. You know what I'm saying? And there's the image of the body. But if we take this spiritually, we should understand the context of the image of his son, that he might be the what? The firstborn among many brethren. The firstborn among how many brethren? Uh, uh, two, three, four, how many? Many, many, it's not, uh, many, many, many. You know what I'm saying? Among many brethren. So what are we? Are we, are we, uh, we call each a father, father? No, no, this is my brethren. You know, who is my brother? You know what I'm saying? Who is my mother? And, and my sister. One who does the will of our father, our Abba. We cry Abba. You, you, you always, because it's the spirit. It's that spirit of what? Adoption. You see? And those who, who don't have it, of course, how can they cry? They, they, they haven't been adopted. So they don't view him as father. You know what I'm saying? And Abba knows best. You know what I'm saying? And Abba knows who is blessed. So it says right here that moreover, verse 30, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So did he call everybody? Huh? Did he call everybody that could just grow dreadlocks? Did he call everybody who could um, smoke marijuana? Did he call everybody who liked to eat ital, a vegetarian, microbiotic, um, holistic, healthy food? No. Did he call everybody who liked to go to reggae dance, who like reggae? I love reggae music. Did he call everybody who, who loved Bob Marley? Did, 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 is, it, is that what it says right here? I'm not trying to be fine, but you have to understand this, because otherwise, later on, you're going to make a beef steak. You understand? Know I don't know what no Rastafari doing making a beef steak. First of all, just, just in principle. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them, them, say them, he also called, and whom he called, whom he, what, called, them he also, what, justified. Justified means he made them right, right. He made them tzaddik. You understand? He made them tzaddik on. He made them righteous. Now, just think about how much many of us, in ignorance, some maybe knowingly, but most of us in ignorance, thought that, okay, if I, if I, if I roll a big, a big head split, that's righteous. If I have a Congo Nazi, a Bongo Nazi, if I have some big junks, then, you know, they say, oh, oh, oh that's righteous. Am I righteous? If I have, I have a big red, gold, green, you know, with the scarf and the whole dress and the chemise, the chemise and, and the suri and, I mean, even, even the red, gold, green sandals, that's righteous. Am I righteous there? You know what I mean? Or if I have a daughter, you know, they want to say, yeah, the man, the righteous there. You know, so, no, none of that's righteous. You, you have to get out of that. We all have to get out of that. What, we, what makes us righteous? Ask yourself that for a moment. Some of you already know the answer to this. Some might not. But just ask, what do we think makes you righteous? Because you say Rastafari. You can say Rastafari, jaw unto your horse. That's not going to make you righteous. That doesn't make you righteous. I mean, I mean, you could burn herb like it's, 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 no, it's no tomorrow. That doesn't make you righteous. You could, you could have gone to every reggae dance. You could have every tune that on um, this rhythm, this dub, this plate, whatever. That don't make you righteous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could eat Itao for breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper, a little snack overnight while burning the herb, listen to reggae, that doesn't make you righteous. And you know what? We can even read our Bibles between all that, that we're doing. That don't make us right. It's accepting the righteous, accepting 
Yeshua HaMoshiach, accepting his son, receiving Kabbalah, Kabbalah, Yosem to Kabbalah, his dearly beloved son. And this sacrifice and the meaning of this sacrifice, you see why we have the skull and bones down here? There's a very important reason why the skull and bones down here. Why, why is that place called the place of the skull, Golgotha? You know, some people think it's accidental or it's a part of mystery literature. No, 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 it goes deep in that. Abba, our father, he loves us, and we're his children. He, he, he always, I mean, he could have explained this, you know, in, 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 without a parable, so to speak. But, but we, we, as children need those. Why do you think you let your children look at cartoons? Mm. Even though some of those cartoons are so satanic now, they, well, a lot of them have been satanic for a while. But the whole principle of cartoons doesn't need to be satanic, in other words. And we give thanks to the brothers and sisters who are, who are using their talent and their skills so we can get proper educational materials out for our youth and the youths of the new millennium. But let's go off the word right here. So notice this process here. First, he knew them. He foreknew them. Then he predestinated them, right? And whom he predestinated, uh, them he also called. So those who were already, they already had a destiny. It's like a lot of us when we talk about how long you've been Rastafari or how we become Rastafari. I mean, really, when you really start to think about it, it really is so mystical. You really can't, you know, you might think it's because of this or that. But when you have that true calling, you, you really... You're not able to really know of yourself fully, but when you receive his spirit and his word here, then you, you're like, oh, wow. I mean, he already knew why, even when I was doing all that yik yak. You know what I'm saying? Even when I was doing all that folly, he, he still knew why. And I, you know what I mean? Even when I was out there running after the world and worldly things and, 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 and sinning, you know, he already knew I and I. He foreknew I and I. And he predestined I had a destiny. You know what I'm saying? I had a destiny with his majesty. You know what I'm saying? He called I and I, and I received the call. And whom he called, them he also justified. So those who he called, he brought them to the next level. So he was taking them step by step. You know what I'm saying? Step, it's like some of the brothers and sisters who, in being Rastafari for a while, you know what I'm saying, tried in Rastafari, might even join a church or become baptized in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And if one seek to do so, and, and, and does so with knowledge and, 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 and overstanding and true faith, then it is good if they do so. But it's, even if you're in a church or baptized, make sure you receive Yeshua HaMoshiach. Make sure you overstand you know, in the meaning of his, of his sacrifice. And don't be like the worldly folks. Oh, whoa, 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 how does that and why people, you know, all this kind of crazy stuff. First, first ask God, ask Abba. To, to give you wisdom, you know what I'm saying, to, to send to you his Holy Spirit, his Isla Ira to guide you, you understand, you, you, so you have a direct link with Father, and then when you're with your true brothers and sisters, it's like, it's like chant, it's like wow, it's like you see the same testimony in your true brothers and sisters, and you see that you can come to unity and unity and be of one mind, there might be small things, you know, you want to eat, you want to eat beans, and I, I might want to eat tofu. You understand? I mean, there's no commandment, thou shalt not eat beans on this day or that day. If it's a fast time or something else, well, even there, ones have a, a free will. You understand? But the main thing is Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, them he also justified, and whom he justified, right? Notice this in verse 30. Them he also glorified. So now notice that step-by-step -step process. And a lot of folks will just read through these things, like we used to do in church or hear folks. They'll go through this, and we'll hear it, and it sounds nice, King James, that old English kind of Shakespeare kind of sound to it. But do we understand? It's like Philip asked the Ethiopian, um, John Dutter about the Ethiopian eunuch. Um, My friend, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless some man guide me? Verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? Question. If God, if Hashem, if the name, if, if Kedemawi Kaila Shalase be for us, I and I and I, who can be against us? 
question. Who can be against I and I? You know, it's, it's interesting because the further we, we fall away from the sun, you know what I'm saying? Or the further one goes away from the sun, the colder things get. You know what I'm saying? But the further one, one is, is, is not in the proper order of his majesty, the more we begin to think that the world can, 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 can do something to us. The world, is, it ha, you know, the world has some power. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we're falling out of that rightful relationship. It says that he that speared not his own son, his own lidge, right, his own weld, his own bane, the bane ha Elohim, but delivered him up for I and I all. So, so what is the purpose of him being delivered up? Yeshua HaMoshiach in his true humanity, right, as an Ethiopian, as a, as, as a true black Jew, as an Ethiopian. What is, what is the purpose of that? He delivered him up for us all, for I and I all. You understand? For I and I all. How shall he not with him also freely give us, freely, freely, you over that? Freely give us all things, all things concerning this inheritance. Overstand. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Now we know that's the title of respect of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. Who shall lay anything to the charge of his elect? Right? Who shall lay anything to the charge of the elect of God? You know what I'm saying? Only foolish heathen and sheathen and ignorant people and demonized people and deluded and deceived people and liars. You know what I'm saying? Only scoffers and mockers. You know what I'm saying? And evildoers. Only they will lay anything to the charge. But not I and I. It is God, it is Jah, it is Hashem that justifieth. You know what I'm saying? It's God that He is the justifier. He is the one that sets the parameters of righteousness. You understand? Not you, not me, not I or I. You understand? Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? Who is the one that's uncondemned? You know what I'm saying? Who, who condemned? Why are you feeling, brother? Why are you feeling condemnation because of what worldly people say? Sis, why are you feeling condemnation because of what man and people be saying? Because they're not received John to begin with. They can go to church every Sunday. They can go even uh, on Monday, Tuesday if they want to. That doesn't change anything. It is Christ that died. It is, it is, it is, it is, it says, yea, rather, yea, rather. I love this verse right here because it says, it is Christ that died. Then quickly, yea, rather, that is risen, that is risen, rise, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of the Father? Who is at the what? Uh, which hand? At the right hand of the Father, who also maketh what? Intercession. He maketh intercession for I and I and I. So, remember, we can speak about Selassie I, but let's not disrespect Adamawi, Haile Selassie. You understand? And, and, the, and no man can come to the Father except through the what? Through the Son. You understand? And through having sonship. You understand? Let's, let's deal with these couple of verses here to the end of the chapter where it speaks about how secure, not scared, but how secure I and I am. You understand? In the King of Kings, in, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, in the Lord of Lords, in Jesus Christ. The Mitmanon is secure. The Amanya is secure. You understand? The true Aras Taman, the, the, the head which is faithful, is secure. Who shall separate us from the love of Christos? Who or what shall separate us from the love of Christ, from the love of Christ and his kingly character? What? Huh? What can show tribulation? Going through a little bit of tough times, are you? Is that going to separate you from the love of Christ? So you can't really act in the way that the King of Kings has shown us because you're going through a difficult moment, right? Show tribulation or show distress because you're a little distressed you're going to act like a heathen, right? So, or persecution, because you're feeling a little bit of persecution. That, that gives you a right to separate, you know what I'm saying, or to separate the body of Christ, right? Or is it famine? Uh, no, notice that famine allows many of the careless Ethiopians to separate from the love of Christ. Although, otherwise, there would never have been the great transgression 
you understand, the rebellion against the king of kings. Or nakedness. You don't have the clothes you want to wear. You don't, you don't have the latest style. You understand? Or peril. Or, or, or being in some dangerous situation. Or sword. Or gunman. Or bad boy. You understand? Or, or gangster. You understand? Or, or Babylon and their swords. And their ammunition. Oh, well, we can't fight them because them got such and such. What you mean? I, I don't understand that. We fight them spiritually. It's not flesh, my flesh and blood. Because if, if, we, if we win the spiritual battle, when we win the spiritual battle, it doesn't have to condescend to the physical. The reason why there's so much physical warfare is because one's, one's neglect the spiritual and the psychological, so the next, the next of the three worlds is the physical. So then it descends into the physical. And if you notice, always begin in spirit. You, oh, somebody get, give you a bad vibe, bad spirit, right? Then you get this thought over and over in your head and your feelings and thoughts, emotion. That's not your soul all messed up. Next thing is, you know, fisticuffs or, or worse. Verse 36, it says, As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. You understand? Yet we live. We recognize that we are killed. The murder I and I, even in them thoughts. Babylon, the wicked, the evildoers, whatever the name, you understand? We, we, don't, we don't know. We don't, we don't know them. You understand? But we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. You understand? As sheep for the slaughter. Nay, verse 37, nah, 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 nay, 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 in all these things, in all these things, in all these things. You've got to meditate this, in all these things, like David did. Negus Dawit. Negus Dawit had to, he had to strengthen himself in Yahweh. You know, we have to strengthen ourselves. So, when we read this, strengthen yourself. Nay, in all these things. Think about whatever things you're going through. In all these things. In all these things. Not in some of them. No, it says in all these things. How much is all? All is all. In all these things. We are what? More than conquerors. We are more than conquerors because we have the example of the conquering line of the tribe of Yehuda. You understand? Who even conquer hell, death, the grave. You know what I'm saying? You know, and some, and some wonder, well, what is the meaning of 120 years? Well, humble yourself. First receive Yeshua. You understand? Receive Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? Recognize. We are more than what conquerors through him that, what, that loved us that loved I and I. His majesty loves I and I. You know what I'm saying? His majesty loves the Ethiopian. He loved the Hebrew. You understand? Know He's a lover of humanity. You know what I'm saying? He even loves his enemies. That's why he conquered them. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but it's not that love of the world. It's the love of Christ. More than conquerors through him that loved us. Not through our love. Not because we love, I love Jah, I love, you know, no, it's because he loved us. You understand? You know, you have to get the relationship right. You understand? So then your blessing can come right, the true barakat. For I am persuaded, and you have to be persuaded. That means you're not going to read this, oh, I don't know about that because, you know, uh, see, if, if, if you're going that way, you, you go read the comic book or something like that. You understand? Verse 38 says, for I am persuaded that neither... Or neither death, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. <laughs> that sums it about up, right? But it goes on, verse 39. Nor height, right? This is majesty to say, oh, I'm just five foot four. Nor height, nor depth, right? Oh, that's really deep. Nor any other creature. Wow, all of these are creatures. Think about that. Height and depth are creatures. Nor, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. To separate us from the love of Jah. From the love of Hashem. From the love of Kedamawi Haila Shalase. From the love of Haila Shalase first. Which is, which is, not was. Not, in, in not projecting, the, not will be, but which is right now, right? Which is in Christos Jesus, our Lord. 
Christ Jesus, the Moshiach Yeshua, Adonenu. So, who is Adonenu? You understand? Who is Gietachin? Who is the Lord of Lords? It is Yeshua HaMoshiach. Who is the King of Kings? Our Father, Kedamawi Haila Shalase. Our Father, the Hashem. Hashem means the name, Baruch Hu. Bless be He. My brothers and sisters, give thanks for for listening and reasoning and, and may Jah may 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 the King of Kings, may God our Father bless this word to you all, especially in this time when there are many many winds of doctrine and other kind of stuff going on, but but but, but stick to what you know is true and the, and the teaching of his majesty I and I know is true and how do we know it's true because his majesty has given the clearest testimony you understand in, in shortening these days for I and I as the very elect you understand otherwise even I and I salvation might have been in jeopardy because it's really a serious serious time when you understand the last two verses really the last three or so verses where it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, you understand death, you understand? You know, it says that they were in bondage, right? They was in bondage. It, it, the word even teaches us it was in bondage for fear of death. You understand? Because of fear of death. You know, when, when they say, you better not say nothing. You better not open your mouth. You better not speak. They're going to do something with a fear of death. You understand? Um, he's persuaded that it's neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any 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 other creature shall be able. They don't have the ability. So yes, we're living in a time where there are so-called angels, right? And demons. This is why this cover right here, if you see this cover right here, right? There are angels and demons, right? And a lot of this is real. A lot of folks don't want to take this as really being real before it's too late. Whether the Nephilim, the giants, you know, and they've been finding these, you know, these bones all over the place. They've been finding these funny, these funny skulls and shapes you know, all over the place, these, these, these kind of even hybrid creatures all over the place. And we know there's a lot of um, um, evil, um, demonic activity even right now, even on other planets, even under the earth. You know, understanding, And you're going, to be, you're going to hear about a lot of these things even more and more as time goes on. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so that you do not be um, frightened, you do not be brought into you know, a, a spirit of bondage, you understand, to fear, to fear these things. So we didn't put these things out to kind of scare ones, but really to show and reveal, as this particular um, um, CD right here, Abba Caduce, the chess master of the Genesis 6 and the Philium Wars, we're probably going to have to definitely update that in light of the Fikari Yesus and in light of um, what, what the, the Almighty has revealed to I and I, and what is easy to, to verify for oneself. Once again, let's, let's go to this particular picture because now let's understand this picture here again as we began off on right here, the, the apocalypse. You understand this apocalypse right here. This is a very, very interesting because what do you see here? You see His Majesty, right? Right, and then you see the coronation of His Majesty in front of this church, right? And then all around this church, there seems to be all kind of um, 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 angels and demons. Some of these are like fallen angels. You can see right here. These are fallen angels. This one here is interesting. That particular one right there is interesting. Let's see if I have a. a a larger, a larger picture of that, the color picture of that, um, to show the eye of them. I think it's, I think it's one of the pictures in the back right here. Okay, right here. Well, you can see this one a little bit closer up. 
right here and a little bit of color, right? And you can see over here, it seems as though coming from heavenward, right, that this one is shooting some kind of thunderbolt or has some kind of sword, right? But it looks like it's like a thunderbolt. And this angel is blocking, blocking this, you know, with the gasha, with the shield right there. Then as we move the picture, you understand, know move it down, come more earthward, right? It's in front of the church, right? It's like Caduce, Georgis, right? Right there, or symbolically speaking. And it seems as though that one is protecting, you understand, know his majesty. Now you have to notice that while on earth, Right, while while earthward we see the coronation of his majesty, there's a there's a whole spiritual dimension that we as 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 little children, you understand? It's like some things you don't show your children. You understand? Or you try not to show them until they become mature. You don't want to frighten them of that. That's like the the, the spiritual reality and a lot of things that were, you know, hidden from the so-called wise and prudent that are being revealed to the babes in suckling, or the babes and suckling, or the babes in suckling. You understand? So this is a very interesting picture right here, and hopefully we'll have the um, translation and interpretation from His Majesty's original, the Ficare Iesus, um, out soon. But now we do have the, um, the, the Amharic, you understand? We retype set. This right here, we'll show you this before we um, go out to Fikari Yesus, which is the little book. Oh, did, oh, wasn't we supposed to go into the little book, actually? We're supposed to go into the little book. Perhaps we'll go into the little book, you understand, in, 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 in another um, shiur, in another um, lecture and class and everything. But just on the little book, let's sum it up. Let, let's sum it up right here. Chapter ten, chapter ten of um, you could say in a chapter ten of uh, Revelation, so we can understand this uh, in context of our time that we're in. So it says right here, um, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was, as it were, the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried, and, and cried with a loud voice, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roars. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered, right? Notice, seven thunders uttered their voice. Seven thunders uttered their voices. Verse 4, And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, Johannes, right? Or some say John David, but Johannes of, of St. John, Caduce Johannes. And he was about to write, because that was what he was told from the very beginning to write. So he was like a, a Tizai Sahafi. You know, he was about to write it down, but notice what happens next. It says, um, and, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Don't write what the seven thunders, so seven thunders uttered something at this particular prophetic point. And it was sealed up what, the, what, what these seven thunders had uttered. Isn't this interesting? So he was shown things to come, things to come to pass, but here... He is told by a voice from heaven not to write what the seven thunders had uttered. Now, there's many who, you know, different Bible folks, and you, you probably can look it up. We haven't done it recently, but look up the seven thunders. And there's different ones. I think even Walter Viet, mm, 
did a very good series on um, some of the interpretations of, of Revelation. The chiasm, the chiasm, write that down, the chiasm. Um, I think that's a C-H-I-S-M, there's a particular structure to, to uh, revelation and to what is revealed that you really need to understand how people read it from, they think that it goes chapter after chapter, it doesn't really move like that. It, it kind of... It kind of moves, oh my, when you see his majesty's hands, it kind of moves like that. It's like two sevens clashing when you understand the structure of it. it, it it's a whole teaching in itself, and um, we don't have the opportunity to go through it right here, but just speaking about these seven thunders, so he was told not to write them, and the angel, the Melaach, which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven. It lifted up his hand to heaven, right? And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. I don't know, I remember you saw the Nostradamus uh, uh, vids on the Nostradamus props in the History Channel where he talks about that wheel, and the wheel have these eight spokes on it. Those are our eight um, key Hebraic holy times. This is seven plus um, the eighth day, you know, which concludes the, 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 the ingathering or, the, or Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. And many have said that there's prophetical fulfillment to happen that's, that, that, that also is connected with these Hebraic holy times, right, with our Hebraic holy days. You know, it's, it's like 9-11. There was a few Ethiopians that were unfortunately uh, killed, um, even one in the, or at least one that we heard of in the, in the trade center. But then you think about it for a moment. That was Ethiopian New Year. If anything, New Year, Ethiopian New Year should have been a holy day. That means we should have been in a holy way, if you think about it. So that's the point I'm trying to make here. If we have faith in him and keep that which we have been given faithfully to the end, then we will overcome. You understand? But the time, the, the issue about time, and, and, and Brother was telling me about this earlier. I was reading with him, and he was talking about that. Now people talk about 24-hour days. Mm -hmm. What they don't recognize is that they are really only um, about 16 hours. They think it's 24 hours because, remember, everything is digital. How would people really even know? Are you really counting the days? Are you counting the hours? You know what saying? There's really 16 hours. And, and they've been telling you in some of the news things, remember seeing a news clip that said that actually time, something, something's up with time, like um, they were saying some uh, about they added some seconds to it because of the rotation of the earth or they take away some seconds. Remember, all of our time is, 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 is um, configured to Greenwich, to the Greenwich, Greenwich time, or some little town in, in, in England somewhere. You over? Huh? Yeah, some hocus to Harry Potter, the town that Harry Potter flew over. You remember in that movie? Yeah. So that's where all the time is. So really they can do anything with the time, and you wouldn't really even know it. But you feel, if you still have any sensation, you understand on that, on that spiritual level, you can feel something is up. They just don't feel, I mean, you go about everything, you try to make so happy and everything like that, you know, but still it doesn't seem like time, it seems like time is, is, is shorter. You say, oh, the days go fast, it seems like the day, so everybody thinks they're crazy. No, we're coming to a time when time should be no longer, verse 6 of chapter 10. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin, notice when he shall do what? When he shall begin. <laughs> Not when he shall sound, it, but when he shall begin, right? When he shall begin, we're in Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. But in, those, but in the days of the voice of the seven, in the days of the what? The voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, when he shall begin to metaphorically blow his trumpet, or the shofar, 
the mystery of God should be fulfilled. The mystery of God should be fulfilled as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. That's the key. That's the context. Not the mystery of God according to the Buddhists or the mystery of God according to the uh, Hare Krishnas or the mystery of God according to uh, any other, you know, religion or faith or, you know, tribe or mythology or whatnot. But the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants. So, see, it's the servants that get it. And if we seek to become servants, we must be servants. Even as sons and daughters, we first must be as servants. That's how we learn the family business, John's business, to be his servants, right, to his servants, the prophets. Now, here's where the little book is Eden. And I have to tell you, uh, you know, testify to you about the translation of this particular book. You understand? Because I actually felt this. I actually went through this. It, it's... I said it was wild to, just to choose that particular word. You understand? Um, and the voice which I heard from heaven spake to me again and said, Go and take the little book. Right? He says, Go and take which book? The little book. Right? This little book. Right? Go and take the little book. Right? Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, right? So this book, is, this book is not closed. This book is open. When we start to check out what it's saying in this book, this book is open. This is an open book, brothers and sisters. You understand? This book is an open book. Take this book, right? He said, take this particular book, which is what? Which is, which is open in the hand of the Melach, which standeth upon the sea, and upon the earth. And I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the book. You know what? Give me that. Come on, give me the book, all right? Give me that book, right? Now, so he took the book, right? And what happened next? Okay, he said, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take it and eat it up. Eat it up. Eat up that book, right? And it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And in truth, this book, when, when, when you're able to read it and, and, and understand it, you know what I'm saying, which is basically like, like it says right, right here. It says, it says right here, it says, where tinbita nebiyat, and the prophecy, right, or prophecies, but prophecy of the prophets, right, the prophecy of the prophets. It is sweet in the mouth. You know, it's sweet to read. The language is sweet. But when you recognize the content of it, what it's really saying, because it's speaking to this, this war in heaven. You understand? Know it's speaking to this fulfillment that the 120, you understand, the 120 year of His Majesty is bringing us into the fulfillment. We're moving into that time of fulfillment. Remember, it says that the time is coming. Right? When there'll be time no longer. You understand? When there'll be time no longer. Now, not to get into all the details of that right here, but there's a lot of folks that have been t talking about this whole illusion of time, what's going on in this time. Right? So he, he asked for the book. He got the book. He was told to eat the book. And, and in verse 10, he says, I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. You know, I would translate like a, a paragraph, you understand? And I would have to pause. I, would, I almost had to translate a paragraph at a time. You know, like, for example, let me say, let's just open to this page right here, right? I had to translate, like, say, from, from, from the red, you understand, to the red over here, right? And it's not much. It's not much to translate, you understand? But the content of it, and when your eye is open, when you're, when you're able to see it in God, see it through Christ, Yeshua takes away your blindness, that you can see what it's really speaking about. You understand? It was, it was, it was bitter. It was almost like translating a, 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 a paragraph and then having to kind of lay down, drink some water, and, you know, feel like, why am I feeling like that? Because what you, 
it, you know how the stomach is connected in, in the whole system of, of, of the body. The stomach is, 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 is the third, you could say the third seal, in other words, below the heart chakra or the second and third seal right there. You know, um, order, will, wisdom, and righteousness coming to the heart chakra. You know, you know this is how we digest. It's digesting it. Sometimes you get indigestion. You know what I mean? You get, you get indigestion. You know, a spiritual indigestion because you're seeing what it's saying and you're like saying, oh, yeah. Like you really, it's like your eye is open, but it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a bitterness because of what it's testifying to. And the fact that this is, this is what is written and this is what will be done. You know, was, and he said, verse 11, and he said to me, right, and he said to me, he said, he said, he said, he said to me, let's get the last verse, verse 11, thou, you male, must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. Now, we ought to prophesy, right, because this is what was told to Johannes as a servant is told to all of us as sons and daughters and as servants. You understand? Once you take of the book, you have to eat that book. You understand? And see, the effect in that belly, the, the whole belly effect, you understand? Because remember, um, man, you understand, was cursed, right? And, and, and the curse that fell on the, on the serpent was that he would crawl on his belly. You understand? And going on your belly, you understand, is almost like almost symbolic of going on the, you know, um, living like the devil's sort of life. You understand? Now God's word is, is kind of almost like giving you a Quranic spiritually. You understand? It's flushing out of you. You understand? So your belly is bitter as, you, as you're seeking to adjust to the life that John says that we are to lead. So, my brothers and sisters, more on, more on this to come, John willing. We just wanted to show you, the, you know, this apocalypse picture right here, and this is kind of very, very interesting. You see this in a lot of other sort of um, churches, and, you know, we hear about this here and there, and the angels and the them, so forth and so on. But isn't it, you know, not just isn't it interesting, those who say, so what? We're not waiting for His Majesty to return again. You understand? We're not waiting for Him to come again. It's the Father that's waiting for His children to grow up. That's the answer to that sort of question when one say, well, what 2012, 120, what that mean? So what? You understand? Well, so what to you? You understand? But we know what. You know, we know what we worship. You understand? You all worship what you know not. You say, how the Salati is God. You understand? You don't even want to say he's dead. You, know, you obviously worship what you know not. You understand? You say Jesus is not divine. You understand? He, he's not God. You, you obviously don't know what you're worshiping. You understand? We know what we worship. You understand? For salvation is of Moa Andesa, Ze'im, Negeda, Yehuda. Amen and Amen. Shalom. Ras Tessari.